Reza Aslan went on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, and they spoke about religion and extremism. Take a look. I truly believe that if you remove the construct of religion, and that's why this discussion about Islam is so important, because uh, yeah. now the, the threat is Islam is, of all the monotheistic right. religions, particularly uh, prone to I extremism, maybe in this moment. Certainly yeah. the other religions yeah. have had it. But religion is, more than anything else, a choice, but not viewed that way. No, it's not. But I mean, th more importantly, I think it's imp Look, there's obviously a serious problem with religion, religious violence in the world, and particularly in Islam and in the Middle East. But if you're going to blame religion for violence in the name of religion, then you have to credit religion for every act of compassion in the name of religion. You have to credit religion for every act of love in the name of religion. And, and that's not what people usually think. I mean, they, they focus very much on the negatives. Part of the problem is that there's this misconception that people derive their values from their scriptures. And the truth is, is that it's more often the case that people insert their values into their scriptures. I mean, otherwise, every Christian who read the Bible would read it exactly the same way. In this country, not 200 years ago, both slave owners and abolitionists not only used the same Bible to justify their viewpoints, mm -hmm. they used the same verses to do so. I mean, that's a thing about Scripture, its power comes from its malleability. You can read it in any way you want to. If you are a violent misogynist, you will find plenty in the Quran or in the Bible to justify your viewpoint. If you're a peaceful feminist, you will find just as much in those scriptures to justify your viewpoint. What if, what if you're a Jew who loves a bacon egg mm -hmm. sandwich? <laughs> is, there, is there something for me? That might be. Just as a... There's got to be something. I would recommend the Book of Mormon for you. <laughs> I, think yes. I, I knew it. But I mean, but the, that is the point. The, exactly. The point is, is that without interpretation, Scripture is just words on a page. It requires somebody to read it, to encounter it, for it to have any kind of meaning. And obviously, in that transaction, you are bringing yourself, your views, your politics, your, your social ideas into the text. Every, how you read scripture has everything to do with who you are. God and, does and, not and make you a bigot, you're just a bigot. The violence, <laughs> that is a good point, and the violence in that region is, is an outgrowth of a paucity of many things. Not religion not being the sole driver of these, of these identity difficulties that are, that are going There's on. There's a lot of issues that are involved, social issues, political issues, cultural issues, all those things. Will you stick around? So, as usual, when I hear Reza talk, one main word pops into my mind. Sometimes. That's the word. Virtually every point he makes, I always think, sometimes, yeah. So, I agree with a lot of that when he says, well, yeah, you can blame religion for the bad that it causes, but you should also give credit for the good that it causes. I think that's a fair point. But when he gets into the stuff he was saying towards the end there, well, you're not a bigot because of God, you're a bigot because you're a bigot. Sometimes, sometimes it is true that people take their, their social context, their cultural context, and their political context, and they have views based off of, like, how they were raised and what's going on around them, and then, like, they'll, they will insert their beliefs into their religion, and they're more projecting onto their holy book as opposed to reading from the holy book. Yeah, I think that's true sometimes. But also, I think that sometimes you are a bigot because of God. Absolutely! You are a bigot, it's a chicken or the egg type thing, right? And Reza's saying, it's more so the case that you are inserting everything onto your religion. Whatever you already believe, you're, you know, using your religion to justify it. Sometimes that's absolutely true, but sometimes the opposite is true too. Sometimes you have somebody who's an otherwise very pleasant person, very good person, very somewhat moral person who kind of abides by the golden rule, and then they can actually buy into the bullshit in the Bible in Leviticus about how being gay is an abomination, or they can buy into the bullshit about how you should slaughter the infidel in the Quran, and they go, oh, I guess this is what we're supposed to do, because I actually believe this is God talking here. So, again, when Reza talks, I think, sometimes. And then even to, like, that last point that Jon Stewart made that Reza largely uh, agreed with there, and I've heard him kind of speak more about this in other areas and pretty much 100% agree with it, to the idea when it comes to terrorism that, well, look, there's more to it. You can't just point to the religion. Yeah, my answer, again, is sometimes. So I always use these examples. If you're talking about the rise of religious extremism, specifically Islamic extremism, in Iran and in the Palestinian territories, not only is there more to it, in those cases, 
I almost solely blame the West for what happened in, in those cases. Because in Iran, for example, we mingled in their affairs so much and we propped up a dictator because we wanted to take their oil, that, and we forced their country to, to live a certain way, and then there was this natural you know, feeling of oppression and anger bubbled up, and then they turned to the only people who were more nationalistic, which were, uh, you know, fundamentalist religious people, fundamentalist Muslims, and they said, these guys have the answer. So then there was a religious revolution. But I would contend that the only reason why people turn to religious fundamentalism in that case is because of Western intervention. So, in the case of Iran, yes, I think Reza is 100% right. In the case of the Palestinian territories, yes, I think Reza is 100% right. Because there's an occupation going on, and because people don't have basic rights, and they see who the outside invaders are, they know who they feel the enemies are. It's America, and it's Israel, and it's the West. So, in, and they turn to the people who they think are more willing to fight for them, namely Hamas and religious extremists. So in that case, again, I think Reza is 100% right. But where Reza starts to, where it starts to get questionable and where I think he's wrong and where even John Stewart is wrong is if you look at, for example, the Gulf states. Like, the Gulf states, it's not American imperialism or outside, you know, uh, fucking with them that led to a an increase in extremism in their case. For example, Wahhabism predates American imperialism. And what happened with something like Wahhabism is somebody read the Quran, they read the Hadith, and they said, we're going to take a very literalist, very fundamentalist interpretation of this, and we actually believe it, and we're going to make a society and build a system based off of this stuff. So we have, you know, these really lucrative uh, oil contracts and partnerships with the Gulf states, but at the same time that the West is buying their oil and really making them rich, what's also going on? They bring in jihadists to speak at their biggest mosques and they, they, they play it on state TV. <laughs> so it's like, in that you can't blame the West in that case because we didn't do shit to, wrong to them, but they fucking hate us and they hate the infidels and they really have embraced a fundamentalist interpretation of the Quran and the Hadith. So again, the main thing that comes to mind when I hear Reza talk is sometimes. Yes, sometimes it's more complicated than, than just somebody read a book and then they interpret it literally and they implement the ideology. But sometimes that's not the case. And, you know, I, I'd like it if you see liberals try to embrace this idea more. Because oftentimes you see a lot of apologetics and you see a lot of explaining and rationalization around uh, Islamic extremism. And a lot of it is justified. Like I said, the West has... In greatly contributed to the increase in extremism. The Iraq war is a perfect example of that. Uh, you know, what we're doing in Afghanistan and in Pakistan and Yemen and Somalia with the drone war, that's, you know, an example of that. But that doesn't mean that it, there's no such thing as a, a toxic religious ideology developing in a vacuum. Because it does develop in a vacuum, and it happens oftentimes. Not just with Islam, for sure, also with Christianity, also with every religion. So, uh, I think that's, that's the breakdown of it. I, I, I told you guys from day one, I always find myself somewhere in the middle between the Noam Chomsky, Glenn Greenwald, Reza Aslan School of Thought, and the Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett School of Thought, if you will.